everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I am back with a very much requested video. A lot of you wanted me to compare the Pastel Holbein's to the Pastel Brute Funer Macaron colored pencils. Now, the Macarons are supposed to be a total dupe for the Holbein Pastels, but we are going to really put them to the test today and find out how much of a dupe they are. We are going to compare pencil to pencil, the swatch charts. I will also do a blend test, test them out in the pencil sharpener. And we're gonna do all of the tests that I always do in all of my colored pencil comparisons or reviews. If you check the description box down below, I will have links down there for my Facebook group, for my Etsy store, for my Patreon, if you would like to support me there. And as always, everything that you see in this video will be linked down there as well so that you can easily find it. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the difference in packaging. Now this is how the Brute Funer 50 Macaron are gonna to come to you. They come in this cardboard box. As you've seen in previous videos, you know that I took all my pencils out of here and I've already put them in a case. You probably saw that at the introduction of the video as well. But they come in this cardboard and I've just not thrown it out yet just because I need this for videos. <laughs> but they come with these plastic inserts inside the box and all the pencils are just laid in these plastic inserts. When mine came to me, they were dented up just a little bit here on the side, but it didn't affect the pencils at all. My pencils were in really great condition and the packaging, when they came from AliExpress, they were very, very nicely packaged. I mean, they were wrapped and wrapped again with lots of tape and everything else. And considering they had to travel all the way across the world and this is all I had to worry about. My pencils were in great condition. That is wonderful. <laughs> and then we have the Holbeins. And of course, these pencils come so beautifully packaged. <laughs> this is the set from Blick. So this is the US version of these pencils. If you wanna see a thorough packaging review, you could check out my review on these pencils. I'll have both of my reviews for the Holbein color pencils as well as the Brute Funer Pastels linked in the upper right hand corner so that you can check those out. But this box is just really, really nice. It's absolutely beautiful. I love the design on here. And it just tells you up here, we've got 150 pencils in the set. It shows you a picture of what the pencils look like. It says Holbein Artist Colored Pencil up here. And it's got beautiful gold embossing here where it's got the brand name on the box and it slides open very, very easily. And you're gonna see that some are missing because when I tell you I've not been able to put these down, I have not been able to put these down. I'm already on my second coloring page and it's almost completed. <laughs> And that's really unheard of for me because I have, I'm have i usually so, so busy, but I'm actually behind on videos because I've been doing nothing but coloring with these pencils. <laughs> they come with this protective sheet across the top and you're gonna get these little ribbons here that you could easily pull up each tray inside the box. It's going to come with the first layer being all of the bright colors. And then you're gonna get another protective sheet here. And these are gonna be just all the more muted colors. I'm working on a page right now where the scene is very naturey, so a lot of these colors are missing out of here because I'm coloring a lot of leaves and grass and things like that. And then this is the tray we're going to be looking at today. So these are the pastels and I didn't have the protective sheet in there because I just put all these back in the box just because I wanted to be able to do this review and show you all the packaging. So I've already taken that out and I've been using these quite a lot and I've actually just left the trays sitting up on my desk so I can pull and take the colors that I need to for my coloring page that I'm working on. But you can see that these are beautifully packaged. So we're gonna take these out of here because these are the ones that we are going to be doing a comparison of today. And I have looked these over just a little bit already so that I was prepared for this video. And I noticed that we are going to need to look at a couple of the other trays because all of the colors that are in this set, you're actually not getting in the Brute Funer set. And I'm gonna go over all of that as we go through the video. I'm gonna show you exactly which colors you're gonna get, which colors you're not gonna get. And then there is one color that seems to have had a name change, or it is only specific to the Japan set of pencils and not the US set. And when I get to that part of the video, I'm gonna ask all of you that do have these pencils to check your sets and let me know in the comments below 
if your sets came with this specific color and what it's called. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. So here's both sets of pencils and I'm trying to fit them in the frame as much as I possibly can so that you can see them. But the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to grab one of the same colors from each set and we are going to take a look at them pencil to pencil. So let me see if I could automatically pull the color. I think this is probably it right here. Let's see if I was right. I was. So let me hold the pencils right up against one another and I'm gonna show you how much they actually look alike. So if you look at the Brute Finner pencil, it's gonna say Brute Finner right here. They both have the gold ring in the same exact places on each pencil. They both have the covered tips, so you can't see the core and your core is nicely protected. And then this one here is gonna say Brute Funer colored pencil. And then this one, of course, is gonna say Holbein Artist colored pencils. So they both have their brand name written out almost exactly the same. The gold embossing on the Holbein pencil is a little bit darker. I'll hold it a little closer so y'all could see that but it's a little bit darker and you could see it a little bit better. And then let's take a look at the tips of the pencils. And I'm gonna show you something I wanted to talk about in this video here next. So those are identical colors. So if I'm looking at them really, really closely, it looks like the Brute Funer one may be a tad bit darker. And when I get into editing, a lot of times, things look different than what I'm seeing on my viewfinder. So y'all have to let me know what you think. If you think that the core of the pencil actually looks like the same color and see now that I'm turning it a little bit and I'm looking at it at a different angle, it looks as though the core on the Holbein pencil for this color is a little bit darker or brighter. So it may be my lighting. Now over here on the Holbein set, it's going to say Japan at the top, whereas you get the brand name up here on the Brute Funer. And then if we turn them over, the Holbein pencil has the company name, Holbein, Holbein Works LTD here. And then they have the little two stars, which represents their light fast rating. And then they have the name of the pencil and this is ice green. Up here beyond the gold ring, we have the color number, which this one is OP228. And then looking at the other pencil, you can see here that it has the color name down here, but it has the two dots on one side and the other. So it's got the two dots, which would represent the light fast rating on the Holbein. It's got that here, which looks more like it's just a decorative thing that they're doing trying to make the name look a little bit fancier and then here at the end we have the color numbers and you could see that the Holbein is OP228 and then the Brute Funer they have the B for Brute Funer and then it is 1228 so they just put a one in front of it and then they changed or swapped out the letters and on the Holbein I'm not exactly sure what the OP stands for in front of all of the uh, numbers but it definitely doesn't make a difference in the Holbein set from tray to tray because every single one of them actually say OP so since they're Holbein colored pencils I'm really not sure what the OP would stand for so if you know let me know in the comments below but but looking at just these two colors that are supposed to be the same, you can see here if you look at the name on the Brute Funer pencil that it is a misprint. If I look at this really closely, it almost looks like LCE. Let me go ahead and put the whole bind down. This is one of the first things I noticed when I received these pencils. I'm not even sure if y'all could see this, but it says LCE green. And I just had to assume that it meant ice green. Like I said earlier, I didn't have the Holbein pastels to be able to compare it to. So it was a really good guess and that's what I ended up putting on my swatch chart. I had the same error or the same misprint on my pencil with a color called olive yellow. Okay, so I went ahead and pulled that one because I wanted y'all to see this. That is probably the biggest misprint of all. It says Olear yellow. <laughs> 
and that is incorrect. That R should be a V, and so that was definitely a pretty big mistake. But those are the only two I found in my set as far as misprints of the names. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but if you look at the pencils really, really closely, the barrel color is actually a little bit different. I mean, it is very, very similar, and they do pretty much look the same. But the Brute Fooner colored pencil in this identical color looks just a little bit darker, whereas the Holbein pencil looks a little bit brighter. And so let's go ahead and talk about pricing and availability now. If you were interested in purchasing the Holbein pastel set, you can get these on Blix website and they are $142.28 right now. Now that price has come down just a little bit. Since I did my original view a couple weeks ago, I believe that they're either running a sale or they've had a price drop because right now the 150 set is $427.55. And as of the time that I filmed my original review on the Holbeins, they were almost $470 for the full 150 set. When I get into the video a little bit later, you're gonna see that by purchasing just the pastel set, you're not gonna get the same colors that are in the Brute Fooner Macaron set. You're gonna get most of the colors, but you're not gonna get all of them because in this set, they've actually pulled a couple of the colors from a couple of the other trays and they have put them into this set. And as we get further into the video, I'm gonna to explain to you which colors those are. Now, if you just wanted to try them out and you just were interested in maybe just a 12 set of the pastel tones and you wanted to purchase them from Blick and get the USA version of the Holbeins, they're $35.59. So if you're interested in any colored pencil set that is more of an artist grade colored pencil set and they're very, very expensive, I always suggest buying a smaller set. So I would suggest going with the much small, smaller set where you're getting just 12 colors. You're much better off spending the $35.59 to see if you really like them. And then if you really do like them and you want more colors, you could either add other colors on open stock. You can go and purchase the much bigger set if that's where you want to go with it. Or you can purchase the bigger pastel set if you only wanted just the pastels. So the Holbeins also are sometimes available on Amazon Japan and they are available on Amazon Japan for a much cheaper price in US dollars. I'm not sure of the differences between the Japan version of the Holbeins and the US version of the Holbein sets. I did find one difference, and I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit when I get to the review of the colors, but I know these were very readily available on Amazon Japan quite a while ago, and I saw lots of people in my Facebook group purchasing them for right around $250 from Amazon Japan, which is a really great price for the entire set. I'm not sure if you could buy just the pastels on Amazon Japan. I know that now you just have to keep checking. Sometimes they're available and sometimes they're not available. But I know quite a few people that have purchased them from there and they have had very good luck and they have actually saved quite a bit of money purchasing them from there. Now moving on to the Brute Fooner pencils. These are available on AliExpress. They were available on Amazon and when they were, I shared that in my Facebook group, but I'm not sure if they still are as of right now still available on Amazon. I will have to check that. If they are, I will link it in the description box below because they were very difficult to find without me just having the direct link. I had gone on Amazon and I just did a search and tried to search for the Brute Fooner Macaron and they did not come up. And I can't even remember how I found out they were available and ended up with the direct link. If you were purchasing them from Amazon, which I know a lot of people feel much safer purchasing from Amazon, but if you were to purchase them from Amazon, I believe they were right around $25 for this set. I got my set on AliExpress and I had never ordered from AliExpress before. So I was a little bit weary, but in the end I was happy with my experience and I paid right around $14 for these, $14 and some change. Now, as I explained in my previous videos on these, they are listed right around $17 and I will have the store that I purchased these from down in the description box below. I believe it's called the Anstel store but they had really good service. I had tracking information and all of that. I was very, very happy with my purchase and delivery, but 
I was a little bit hesitant when I went to the cart, and so I backed out of the cart. And when I backed out of the cart, it popped up and gave me a coupon. So I ended up getting a coupon for an additional $3 off, I think. Check out with tax and everything else that I had to pay. I ended up only paying $14 and I think 39 cents for this set of pencils, which is a fantastic deal for a set of 50 pastels. So I grabbed two pencils, the same color from each set. The color I have is the Jean Brilliant from each one of the sets. And we are going to test these in the doll 133. So the purpose of this is just to be able to determine the quality of the wood in each one of these pencils and compare them as far as how hard or soft the wood is on the barrel of the pencils. So let's go ahead and start with the Brute Fooner colored pencil. And we will see how hard it is to turn the lever on the Brute Fooners. It's actually sort of in the middle turning this lever with the Brute Fooner colored pencils. The wood is not very hard. It's not soft, soft like a Prismacolor, but it's sort of somewhere in between. And that is the lead that we get with the Doll 133. Now we are going to try the Holbein pencil. So let's go ahead and turn the lever and see the difference. And it actually feels right about the same on the Holbein. It does feel a little bit smoother with the Holbein as I turn this. And I don't know why it's not stopping and that's kind of scaring me, so. <laughs> I stopped it on my own because I don't want to be sharpening these away, but that is the lead that I got with the Doll 133 on the Holbein. And honestly, I don't know why it kept sharpening or if it was going to stop on the Holbein, but to be safe and not sorry, I pulled it out myself and still had a beautiful lead. <laughs> So as far as the wood goes, they feel right about the same as far as hardness or softness. They both feel like they're somewhere right in the middle, not as soft as a Prismacolor and not as hard as something like if I were to put a very budget-friendly Crayola into the pencil sharpener and try to turn the lever here, in which case I would barely be able to turn it. It would be very, very hard to turn it, and it really does hurt your hands quite a bit when trying to use the Doll 133 to sharpen your Crayola colored pencils. If I'm using Crayolas and I'm just doing one or two pencils, it's fine, I'll use the Doll. But most of you know that now I have the Jarling pencil sharpener, which I actually really, really love, and I always use it on three and I've been using my Crayolas quite a bit. I actually just released a tutorial using my Crayolas and to sharpen those pencils while I was creating that tutorial, I actually used the Crayolas in this pencil sharpener. But we are not gonna test it with the Jar Link today. We all know the Jar Link works wonderfully, but for this comparison review, I just wanted to be able to see the difference in how hard or soft the wood was in these pencils. So now we are moving on to the swatch charts and we are gonna do a complete comparison between these colors and this may take a little while because we're really going to compare all 50 colors color for color and we're gonna see which trays of the Holbeins that some of these colors that you get in the Brute Fooner Macaron set are going to come in. Now this swatch chart here is available in my Etsy shop. It's available just like this or it is also available with just the names and the numbers so that you could put your Brute Fooners in color family order. I didn't mention that in the beginning of the video but when you receive your Brute Fooners in the mail they do come with a lot of the different undertones mixed up in the package and so I took all of those and I put them in exact color for family order and this is what I came up with and I love the way that they turned out. When they come to you they actually have two trays and then in one tray they're gonna have all of the colors that are much more muted and then in the other plastic tray they have all of the colors that are much more pastel. And if you wanna see that again, I will have the the link for my actual review on these pencils in the upper right hand corner if you want to go ahead and see that. But in that video, you will be able to see exactly how the pencils are laid out when they come to you in the mail. Now this is the Holbein colored pencil chart and I did swatch out all of my colors 
right on the chart that it came with because this is probably the one and only pencil set that I will keep in the order that it came in. And I love how the swatch chart is laid out where we have the brights at the top. I think they start on this row and come down to here. And then we have this section here, which is the more muted tones that come in the set that are on a whole other tray. And this one has the grays, your blacks, your browns, and some more muted tones and all of greens. And then down here, this section here is the section we're going to be comparing because this is the section of pastels. Now let's go ahead and look at these two and check out the color names first. And we're sort of going to go back and forth and see what is available in which set. And then after we're done doing this, I'm going to take a few of the colors and we're going to swatch them out so that we could see the color that comes from the core of the pencil onto the paper because it will be probably a little bit difficult for me to keep going back and forth and comparing the actual swatches. We might do that for a couple of them. So let's go ahead and start at the top of the Brute Fooner. We're going to use the Brute Fooner chart and then we're going to try to match it up to the color over here in the bottom section of the chart. And I will let you know right now that some of the colors that are in the Brute Fooner set are going to come from some of the other trays in the brights or the more muted tones. So we're going to see which ones those are right now. So if we start up here, we've got the ivory. So here is the ivory, and you could see again that the numbers are pretty much the same. They swapped out the B for the OP in the Holbein set, and then on the Brute Fenner sets, they just added an extra digit to the front of it. So here we have three ones and a six, and then here this one is OP116. Let me go ahead and hold it up here, but like I said later in the video, we are gonna do a much more thorough matchup because it's kind of difficult for me to hold this close enough so that y'all could see the actual color. Let me maybe try it like this. But here is the ivory in the Holbein set, and here is the ivory in the Brute Fenner set. And looking at the Brute Fenner set, it almost looks like it is a little bit of a different color. And then we have cream, and cream doesn't actually look like a cream. It's very much a yellowish orange color, and it's really beautiful, but we've got cream here and we have cream here. And if I hold these up right next to one another, they do look just a little bit different. This one in the Brute Fooner set looks like it may be a little bit darker. So here we have the Naples Yellow, and the Naples Yellow in the Holbein set has a lot more orange in it. So here's the Naples Yellow in the Brute Fooner, and then the Naples Yellow in the Holbein set. But you can clearly see that that has much more orange in it. Then we have this flesh color, and this is the color that I really wanted to talk about because this is B1123. And if I match up the numbers to the Holbein set, and I look for the 123, which would be OP123, I find it down here, which is this light sand color. And so I don't know if this is specific to the US set and they have changed the name from Flesh because I did go online and I looked it up and I found a Japanese website that actually has this color listed in the Holbein set as Flesh. But in the set that I have, which of course is the US version of the pencils, because most of us know that these pencils were not available to us in the US for quite a long time, and that's why everybody was purchasing them from Amazon Japan or other Japanese websites, this color has had a name change. So if you have a set or if you have the Japanese set, I would appreciate it if you would look over your colors and you would let me know the answer to that. And I think that might help out others too that are watching this video, but I would really love to know if that was just a name change from the actual color flesh and if they changed it to light sand because it also looks like it is the same color if we hold this up right here. Actually, the flesh looks like it has more orange in it. It does look much brighter, but I don't know if it's just my swatch. Maybe that's one of the ones when we get to the comparison and we swatch out some of the colors, maybe that's one of the ones we could actually put up head to head and compare. So then we come to this mustard color, and this mustard color is right here. 
I'm going to try to get through this a little bit faster. I'm not going to keep holding the colors up one right up against another. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to zoom this in when I get to editing so y'all can see the colors a little bit close next to one another, but I'm going to save that part for the next part of the video where we actually swatch the colors next to one another. So this one does look a little bit darker to me or even a little bit brighter, but this is the mustard in the Holbein set and this is the mustard in the Brute Fooner set. And if you notice, we are not down here in the pastel section. We are up here in the section where we have the tray that has the more muted tones in it. So this is one of the colors that has been pulled from another section of the Holbeins and is not necessarily specific to the pastel set. And then we come to the Jean Brilliance and we definitely have this one in here because I have been using this color so much. I've been using it a whole lot for the skin tones on my coloring pages. And then we have peach, and I know the peach is also in the pastel set, so here's the peach. Then we have apricot, and the apricot is right here. And this is another one that I feel like it is just a tad bit brighter in the Holbein set. Then we have the salmon pink, so we get the salmon pink. And then shell pink is down here. Cherry blossom is right here. So we get the cherry blossom. Coral is right here. And I see a huge difference in the coral color. Here we have pink. And then here's our pink in this set. And they definitely do look quite a bit different. This one looks like it has a lot more of a melon type tone. And then this one in the Holbein set actually looks more pink. Rose pink, and then we have rose pink right here. Cosmos, here is our Cosmos. That one also looks very different. And then the Fuchsia, so we get Fuchsia in both of the sets. Mauve, and Mauve does look a little bit, all of these colors I think really look quite a bit different in each one of these sets but it looks like the names are exact. So rose gray and rose gray, this one looks very similar. Ash rose is down here. That is one of my favorite colors. I've been using that a lot for skin tones as well. And then we have sea fog, which is another beautiful color and very, very different. Then we have lilac and here is lilac over here. Wisteria is right here. Smalt blue, and here is smalt blue in this set, and they do look a little bit different. Smoke blue, this is one that I really wanted to compare because this is a very different color too. So here is the smoke blue in the Holbein, and I am curious about this one. And it looks like this smoke blue here in the Holbeins has more gray in it, and this one has more blue in it. It may just be my eyes. I think that's another one that I want to be able to test out. Here we have Forget Me Not Blue. I love this color. <laughs> I love the name. Here is Forget Me Not Blue and then Forget Me Not Blue. And the Forget Me Not Blue on the Holbein pastel set looks a little bit darker. Lavender Blue and Lavender Blue. And that color definitely looks different. The one on the Holbein set actually looks like it has more lavender in it. And this one looks more like a blue. Here we have Sax Blue, and this is Sax Blue. It looks a little bit darker in the Brute Fooner set. Sky Blue and Sky Blue, those look the same. Actually, it might look a little bit darker over here in this set. Then we have Aqua. The Aqua does look the same. Porcelain Blue, that's a really pretty color. And then we have the infamous ice green <laughs> that had the misprint on it in the Brute Fooner set that I was struggling to figure out when I did my review. But the colors look pretty similar. Actually, the ice green on the Brute Fooner might be a little bit lighter. And then we have jade green and the jade green over here. Cobalt green and cobalt green. Those look very different. Here we have the surf green. And then the surf green is also over here in the pastel set on the Holbeins. Mint green and mint green. Then we have misty green and misty green. Chartreuse green. Now this is another one that you are not going to get if you purchase just the Holbein pastel set. And this is a gorgeous color. But in the Holbein set, it is going to be a part of the brights. Then we have lettuce green. 
And here is the lettuce green and the Holbein set. Leaf green, this is another one that you're only going to get if you purchase the Pastel Brute Fooner set because here is the leaf green up here. And this one is actually in the tray where we have our more muted tones and the browns and the grays. Opal green. This one is also in the pastel set. And then we have the olive yellow, which was another one that had a misprint on the actual name and it said O'Lear yellow. And so that was the other one that was really driving me crazy. But look at this. Here's the olive yellow in the section of the 150 set that actually has the more muted colors. So you're not gonna get that color if you purchase just the Brute Fooners. But also, here's the olive yellow in the Holbein set, and to look at the difference in the color. It is so much darker and more vibrant, and the color is just completely different. And then we have the Willow Green, and look at this. Here is the Willow Green. You get it in the pastel set of the Holbeins. But if you were to have both sets, you're going to have two completely different colors because this is what the willow green looks like here and this is what the willow green looks like in the Brute Fooner set and they are like night and day. That's really the first one aside from the olive yellow that I have found that is literally night and day. Now we're coming down here to the last row. Here's our sand and here's the sand. Beige and beige and this one also looks very, very different. Here's the beige in the Holbein set, and then the beige in the Brute Fooner set is much lighter. This one ha looks like it has a lot more brown in it than this one does. And then we have cork, and cork also looks very different from the cork you're gonna get in the Brute Fooner set. And then at the end over here, you're gonna get two grays. And so those are definitely going to come from the tray that has two grays in it. So you're gonna get the warm gray two, which this is the warm gray two. They look very different from one another. This one looks a lot darker in the Holbein set. And then the cool gray number two. So the cool gray number two is right here. I think even the cool gray number two in the Holbein set looks a tad bit darker, but they do look very similar. So as you can see, there's a couple colors that were pulled from some different trays. And looking at the Holbein section of the pastels on the swatch chart, you're also getting all of these neons. So it seems as though these neons here are what was swapped out for other colors where they pulled a couple colors from the muted section of the set and the bright section of the set. So you are missing out on those neons and they are some gorgeous neons. I've been using these as well and I really, really love them. And then the other thing is that you can see that a lot of the colors are different from one another, like the olive yellow and the willow green. They were like completely night and day. So if you were to have the pastel set or even the whole 150 set of the Holbeins and still purchase the Brute Fruiter Macaron set, you are still getting different colors. And I noticed a lot of the colors on here are lighter shades or lighter versions of the colors with the same names on the Holbein set. So now we're gonna go ahead and swatch some of these colors out side by side and see how different the colors are. I have a sheet of Spring Hill paper here. Y'all know this is the paper I always use. I've actually not used my Holbeins yet, on the Spring Hill paper. So I'm really excited to see how they lay down on this paper. And after this test, I'm going to move forward and we're gonna do a blend test. And I did not do a blend test in my actual review because I shared a colored page, which was very different than most of my colored pencil reviews. So I did share a colored page that I colored the entire page with the Holbeins and I'll put a card up in the upper right hand corner so you could check that video out if you would like to. But usually in my reviews, I do the blend tests to see how the pencils blend together. But since I had colored an entire page, I thought that it would be much better just for me to share my colored page. So you can see I've already pulled a few colors here and I tried to get every different color family here and the ones that I was most curious about. And so we're just going to swatch these out and see how similar the colors are. Now the first one that I have is Coral from each set 
and I'm gonna mark them as I go so that y'all know exactly what I'm swatching. I have the Brute Fooner Coral, and we're gonna go ahead and make a swatch of that. And now I have the Holbein Coral, and we're gonna make a swatch of that. And oh my goodness, I could feel the difference in how these go down. These feel quite a bit harder, and then these feel a bit softer than the others. But these go down like a dream. I am, I am in love with these Holbeins. But if you look very closely, let me actually, I think I pushed a little harder here on the top as I came down. So looking at these colors, they're very similar, but this one is brighter for sure. And this one is a little bit more corally than this one over here. This one seems to have a little bit more pink in it. So the next color I have from each set is going to be the olive yellow. And look at this. Remember these colors were very different, like night and day. Even the color on the barrels are very, very different as well. And I think this might be the biggest difference in any one of the pencils as far as the color of the barrel. From the ones that I've looked at so far, this one and also the willow green and I'll show you that in a minute because I pulled both of those because I wanted you to be able to see the huge difference in these colors. So this is going to be the olive yellow. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the Holbein first. That is the olive yellow in the Holbein set and that is the olive yellow in the Brute Fooner set. So look at that difference. Is that not huge? That is a really big difference. And here is the willow green and you could see again that there is a huge difference in the color of the barrel. But let's go ahead and swatch the whole bind first and look at that. If my eyes are not deceiving me, <laughs> this one looks very similar to the olive yellow in the Brute Fooner set. Wow. And then we are going to swatch the actual olive green in the Brute Fooner. I think I said olive green. That was actually willow green. So look at this so here are these colors here and then here are these colors here and I know that I swatched out the right ones it almost confused me I'm like wait a second did I do the right thing but you can see that the olive yellow in the Holbein set and the willow green in the Brute Fooner set are very similar and then the olive yellow in the Brute Fooner and the willow green in the Holbein are very similar as well. So that is very interesting. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So I put those backwards. I'm going to do the Holbein over here and the Brute Fooner on this side just to follow suit with what I've already done. So here's the Holbein. Oh my gosh, these Holbeins feel wonderful on this paper. And there is the Brute Fooner. Those look very similar. I think this one might be a little bit darker. And see, because these are a more budget pencil, if I go over this just one more time, the colors end up looking very, very similar. So for this one, I may have needed a couple layers. And the Holbein, being a softer pencil than what these Brute Fooners are, the color was much more saturated in the very first layer. And now let's go ahead and test out the ice green. This one is the Holbein. This is a beautiful color. And then we have the ice green in the Brute Fooner. And this ice green in the Brute Fooner, there is not, I don't know, I seem to notice like after using the Brute Fooners for a little while, the consistency with the way the pencils lay down is not always consistent. This one laid down like the core of the pencil was much softer and it was very similar to using the Holbein actually. And the colors in these two are very, very similar. They may even be the same. And it's a very light color, so it's a little bit difficult to see on camera, but it's a gorgeous color. The next one I pulled was the Fuchsia. So let's go ahead and lay down, what is this, the Brute Fooner I have in my hand. So we'll lay down the Brute Fooner first over here, and then we will come back, and that one went down really, really soft too. That felt a lot like this ice green, and very comparable to how the Holbeins feel. And those two colors, I don't know, this one, I did lay another layer down when I laid that one down, so let me go ahead and come back here so it's not cheating. <laughs> but the colors look very similar. Okay, so now this one was the one that I really questioned. This was the one that had the change of the name, and this is the only one that I found like that, but the numbers are similar on these two where we have the OP123 and then the B1123. And the barrels look a little bit different. This one looks like it has a little bit more of a peachy tone to it, to the light sand from the Holbein set. 
but we are going to go ahead and swatch these out one right next to the other and we're going to see how different they are. Let's go ahead and lay down the Brute Fooner first. So this is the flesh from the Brute Fooner set. And I'm going to do two layers for this one and lift up as I come down. And then I'm going to do the same over here for the whole bind. But those colors are identical. Those are absolutely identical. There's no difference in either one of those. They're definitely the same color, but they had a name change somewhere. And definitely let me know in the comments below if you have the Japanese version of the Holbeins and if they still say flesh on them. Because like I said, when I did a little bit of research and I checked on that, I found a Japanese website and it stated that they did in fact have the flesh in the Japanese version of the pencils. The next color I have from each set is the Smoke Blue and this is another one that I was curious about. So let's go ahead and swatch out the Holbein. And I'm using harder pressure at the top and then as I come down I'm lifting up just a little bit so that that way you could see the difference or the different values that come from the color. And this was another one that I was pretty positive was a little bit different. The Brute Fooner set it definitely looks more blue and the one in the Holbein set has a little bit more gray in it. It's more of a gray blue and this one is still a gray blue, but I see a lot more blue in this shade here. So the last one I wanted to be able to test was this lavender blue. So we're doing another blue and it's a different shade of blue than the smoke blue, but I wanted to make sure I got one of the blues in here. So let's go ahead and swatch out the Holbein and then the lavender blue from the Brute Fooner. And I could already see that the lavender blue in the Brute Fooner set is a different shade of blue. This one definitely represents more of what I would imagine a lavender blue is. And this one has a lot more blue in it than it does a shade of lavender. I hope that the swatching out of all of these colors, one right next to another, really helped you all to be able to see how different the colors are in each one of these sets because a lot of them do look really similar. I mean, the coral looks really similar. The situation here with the olive yellow and the willow green, this here was very interesting to discover. The wisteria looks very, very similar. This ice green is almost identical. The fuchsia is almost identical. The light sand and the flesh, they're almost identical and the smoke blue, they're a little bit different, and the lavender blue, they are a little bit different. And really the only difference in the coral swatches is that this one looks like it leans more towards the coral side. This is the Holbein. And then the Brute Fooner swatch looks like it just has a little bit more pink in it. So for those of you that were disappointed that you didn't see a blend test in my original Holbein review, we're gonna see one now. <laughs> we are gonna go ahead and test the blendability of these two sets of pencils, one right up against the other. So I think for the Holbeins, we're gonna go ahead and do the Smalt Blue, the Lilac, and the Cherry Blossom. So maybe from the Brute Fooner set, we should go ahead and grab the same exact colors so that we are comparing exact apples to apples with both of these pencils. I've got the same exact colors from both sets and we're gonna go ahead and compare these. And I wanted to get some colors from sort of some different color families because I really wanna be able to put these to the test side by side. So we've got a blue, a purple, and a pink. So how about we go ahead and test out the Brute Fooners first and then we will blend the Holbeins and put it right next to the Brute Fooner so we could see the difference. And I will hold it up much closer to the camera after I get done blending out both of the colors. So let's go ahead and lay down the small blue and then the lilac and the cherry blossom. I will tell you though, these Brute Fooner pencils feel really nice on this Spring Hill paper. Okay, so I'm on the second layer and I'm coming in here with my mid-tone. There's a pretty big difference in the values of the colors here from the lilac and then we're switching color families from the lilac to the uh, cherry blossom. So we may not be able to get a really great blend there, but we're gonna see what we can do. Always make sure you're lifting up on your pencil as you come into the next color. So this is our third layer. And as I come in and try to transition into this cherry blossom, I'm going to lift up just a little bit. And then I'm gonna go over that transition area with a little bit harder pressure with my lightest color. So for the fourth layer, let's go ahead and go back the other direction to try to fill some of this white of the paper. 
and then we are going to come in with our mid-tone and then our lightest color and again this is our fourth layer I can't believe I'm actually doing a pretty good job of counting my layers y'all know I always get mixed up <laughs> Okay, so this is the fifth layer, and I am coming in here with a little bit harder pressure now. And then my highlight color, and just as I thought you could see, I'm not getting a perfect transition here between these two colors, and that's why I wanted to do this, because I really wanted to test these out. So this is six, and we're gonna see how the Holbein's compare when it comes to blending those two colors outside of color family. And usually with more budget pencils, I don't usually get more than seven, eight layers. This is gonna be number seven. And I do still have a good amount of the white of the paper left. So let's see if we can get number eight down here. This is quite a lot of layers for a budget set. Usually I've got a lot of the white of the paper filled with my budget sets. And I will say these pencils, once you get, so this is nine, once you get a lot of the pigment on the paper, with these, you can feel the pigment actually moving around and blending together. I really love that about these. And then this is nine. Actually, this is 10. This is layer 10. I'm trying to blend out that transition there and use a bit of harder pressure. This cherry blossom color is gorgeous, but that's 10 layers and I could probably even get more with that set, which is really amazing for a budget set of pencils. And I don't remember in my original review when I did the blend test how many layers I actually got down on the paper, but I probably stopped around seven or so because that's usually what is to be expected with a budget set of pencils. Even maybe this time I may have used a little bit lighter pressure. You have to really take all of that into account when you are laying down your pencils because if you use much lighter pe pressure, you can definitely get more layers down on the paper. So now we're gonna test it out with the Holbein's. This is my small blue, and I'm gonna move this a little closer than where I have the name of the pencils because I wanna get this pretty close so y'all could see a good comparison. And we are gonna see the difference in how these blend together. And I'm really curious to see here at this transition from one pencil to the other if the Holbein's do a little bit better. Okay, so this is two. And we're coming down into that highlight color. And I could already see that the Holbein's are blending together quite a bit better. Oh my gosh, I just forgot if I was on two or three. I think this is three. Coming down into that other color, our third layer of our mid-tone. And they seem to be, I don't know, let's get some more layers down. This is going to be four. And I'm lifting up as I come into that much lighter color there. And a fourth layer of my highlight. So this is five. And I think the transition between those two colors is a little bit better here. Six. And now six with the mid-tone. And six with our lightest color. Let's turn it a little bit now and come in here with the seventh layer, and let's go over this transition here to try to get a much better blend here between these two colors, and then eight. And now that I have eight layers down here, the pigment is starting to move around much more, just like it did with the Brute Fooners. They feel very similar. I mean, one is a little bit softer, and one is a little bit harder, but this is nine, and then this is 10. And you could see as I get more color down there on the paper, you can see the pigment from the pencil actually moving around. Okay, y'all, am I on 10? Gosh, I hope this is 10. I still have a bit of white of the paper left with these, even if this is layer number 10. Let's go ahead and do one more. So this will be 11. And then let's see what kind of blend we can get here at this transition. So here is the highlight color and we're getting a much better transition there. And I think that is probably all the color I'm gonna put down on there. You could see with both of them, I did get quite a few crumbles, but they both look very similar. Let me come back over here and see if I can get into this transition and make that look a little bit better. So I'm just using harder pressure and I'm trying to get those colors to transition together just a little bit more on the Brute Fooner side. And I think they actually did. But let me hold this up a little closer to the camera and so y'all can see my blend. I mean, they're similar. 
they really are similar. And I don't know that I would really expect that much more from colors that are switching in value and color family in the way that these two bottom ones are. But I really can't tell. You guys will have to let me know in the comments below which one you think blended a little bit be better. But I think that they may look very similar. Let me get a blender pencil and we're gonna blend these together and see if we can use a blender pencil to get these colors to really mix together to where that transition is extremely seamless. I'm using my Caran d'Ache Full Blender and I'm gonna try this with the Broom Fooner first and we're just gonna go over this and see how well these blend together. Oh, look at that. Look how the transition just really smooths out with the blender pencil on these Brute Fooners. Oh, and the same down here in this transition area. And you can see it is creating quite a few more crumbs as I go over here and blend these colors together. Let's go ahead and do the same thing over here on the whole vines. Wow, this blender works beautifully with the whole blind whole vines. Oh my goodness. I feel like it's moving the color around a lot more in the Holbein set than it did in the Brute Fooner set. So the Holbeins are much more movable and I noticed that when I was laying the colors down as well. But I think that really improved it. So we'll just get all those crumbs out of the way. And then I'm gonna hold this super, super close so y'all can see that blend. I think it probably made quite a bit of a difference in both of those, but I would say that they blend pretty much the same. I mean, with the Holbeins, it looks between the darkest color and the midtone, it looks like it blended together a little bit better, maybe than the Brute Fooner ones did. I don't know, I could probably come back and blend it in more, but as far as right now and where I'm at, it looks like the Holbeins may be a little bit better, but you would not even be able to tell the difference if you did not have these laying side by side one right up against the other. And if it was on a coloring page, you wouldn't even be able to tell the difference as to whether you use Brute Fooners or Holbeins as far as their blendability. So that is the end of this comparison between the Brute Fooner Macarons and the Holbein Artist colored pencils. And I hope that this review was helpful. I hope you were able to decide whether or not you wanted to pick up a set of the Brute Fooner Macaron pencils or even the Holbein pastels. I will have links for everything you've seen in this video down in the description box below. If you have any questions about either one of these pencil sets that I didn't answer in this review, please let me know in the comments below. I try to make my comparison and all my reviews of all my colored pencil sets extremely thorough so that y'all can just watch the tests that I do and without me giving my opinion too much, just doing all of these tests so that you can watch my video comparisons or video reviews and make a determination as to whether or not these pencils are for you because one set of pencils may work great for somebody and then somebody else may not really care for them and like something a little bit more. So I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, please do subscribe to my channel. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring, bye.